<laughs> uh, thanks, Deb. Um, all right, hello. Uh, my name is Catherine Price. I am a science journalist, the founder of a platform called Screen Life Balance, and also the author of books including How to Break Up with Your Phone and The Power of Fun, How to Feel Alive Again. And I've been given a job at the, this year's festival, and it is to help each one of you have fun while you're here. You can think of me as kind of your fun czar. Now, you might be having two reactions to that. One might be, oh my goodness, it's June, it's Aspen, look at all these people around, of course I'm gonna have fun. On the other hand, you might be like, there's a lot of serious stuff going on. You know, look at the news or maybe don't look at the news. <laughs> it's nice to have fun, but it's frivolous. So I'm here to tell you that the, both those opinions are wrong. Fun actually is important, and it's not necessarily gonna happen on its own. So as funs are, the first thing I need to do is to establish a definition of what fun actually is. So if you look in the dictionary to see what fun is, it's gonna say that it's like amusement or enjoyment or lighthearted pleasure, which actually is completely inadequate. Because if you actually ask people to tell you the moments in which they've had the most fun, to reflect on memories, they tell you about some of the most treasured memories that they have from their whole lives, the moments in which they felt the most alive. I also noticed when I was collecting these stories that three themes kept jumping out from people's stories, and they were so common that I came to conclude they actually constitute a new definition of fun that I think is a lot more accurate than what's in the dictionary. And those three factors were playfulness, connection, and flow. So I always like to clarify, especially with adults, that by playfulness, I don't mean you have to play games. <laughs> I just mean having a lighthearted attitude, not taking yourself too seriously, and finding ways to laugh. Connection refers to the feeling of having a special shared experience. So I do think sometimes people have, t have fun when they're alone, but the vast majority of stories that people told me actually involved another person. And interestingly, that was true for introverts too. And then flow is when you're in the zone. It's when you're so actively engaged and present in what you're doing, you can actually lose track of time. So think like an athlete in the middle of a game. So each of those states is wonderful when it happens on its own, but when all three happen at once and you're at the center of the Venn diagram, that's when you experience the feeling that I consider to be true fun. And that doesn't just feel really good when it happens, but it actually is good for us. So fun does like, first of all, you should have fun because it's fun. I always like to say that, but you just do it because it's fun. You can have fun, you have permission. But if you want some justifications, fun is really energizing. It's nourishing. It actually increases our creativity and bizarrely our productivity. It also reduces stress and it reduces loneliness. And both of those things are essential, not just for our mental, but also for our physical health. And then perhaps most importantly for our purposes together here, fun also unites us. So when you have fun with another person, I love these photos so much, guys. When you have fun with another person, you don't see them as a different nationality or a political party or race or religion. You connect with them as a human being. And not only does that feel so deeply nourishing, but it is exactly what we need more of right now. So that begs the question, how do you have more fun? I wanted to give you some practical suggestions for things you can do here at Aspen and also beyond to increase fun for yourself. The first is to protect flow by reducing distractions. So the reason I say that is that anything that distracts you is gonna kick you out of flow and then it's gonna block you from having fun. And by far, the number one distractions for most of us these days are our smartphones. So my, my first invitation to you is to try to keep your phone in your pocket as much as possible when you're at Aspen, and especially in those moments when you're waiting for something. So when you're waiting for coffee, or you're waiting for a meal, or you're waiting for a session to begin, because those are the moments that are the most tempting to reach for your phone, but they're also the moments in which it's most likely that fun and or serendipity will occur also may make you feel a little bit awkward. So what do you do next if you have your phone out of your hand? Well, I've got three suggestions for you. The first is to notice and share delight. So this is an idea I got from the poet Ross Gay, who wrote a fantastic book called The Book of Delights. And the idea is quite simple. Instead of going about your day doom scrolling, you instead make a point to notice things that delight you. They do not have to be deep. It could be a cloud. It could be a beautiful flower. If you're like me and you find delight in absurdity, it could be the sight of this squirrel, which was outside my kitchen window not so long ago. <laughs> so <laughs> when you notice something that delight you, delights you, you put a finger up in the air and you say out loud, delight. <laughs> now you might feel silly. Someone just laughed at me at that very idea. So I want to practice this together. I'm gonna to count to three. I want everyone to put up their finger in the air and say delight on three. Ready? One, two, three, delight. Oh my God, 
Okay, first of all, total delight for me. That was like better than I even could have imagined. <laughs> and second, congratulations to all of you because you just engaged in an exercise that's been proven to boost people's moods. And it's even more effective if you share your delights with other people. So when you have those little moments, maybe at the reception tonight when you're standing next to someone you don't know, maybe ask them to share a delight, share one of your own, and notice how that makes you feel. My second suggestion is gonna sound weird, so bear with me here, given our context. I want you to come up with some bad ideas. Now, <laughs> this is an idea I got from a group called Fundmentum Labs. And basically the premise is that when we brainstorm, particularly when we're brainstorming solutions to problems, we typically try to come up with good ideas, right? That's kind of the purpose of this whole gathering. Uh, but that puts a lot of pressure on our brains. It's actually hard to be creative. You judge yourself. So what would happen if instead you tried to come up with the worst possible ideas you could to solve a problem? Like, let's say I was trying to brainstorm like the worst ideas I could come up with to make the Aspen Ideas Festival more fun. I actually did this with my husband. So these are true stories. I mean, how about like, <laughs> how about we make an Aspen Ideas fight club? <laughs> That's a bad idea. Um, how about we hire a troop of clowns and they could patrol the grounds maybe at night? That's a bad idea. What about giving everybody who's here a whoopee cushion to use on someone else? That was actually a suggestion that was given to me at a conference I once spoke at, and I would just like to say for the record that that is also a horrible idea. Um, but here's the thing, not only will it actually probably result in fun if you ask someone next to you to brainstorm the worst ideas possible to come up with one, a solution to one of the wicked problems that we're facing, but you might find that in those bad ideas, there's actually the seed of something good. So for example, maybe there's a playful competition we could invite people to join in for that would not get everyone who participated in it fired. I actually saw a ping pong table somewhere here, so take advantage of that. Or, you know, maybe instead of clowns, we could do something clown adjacent, but not quite so creepy. So I was thinking about this, and it occurred to me, I recently learned how to, or I tried to learn how to juggle, and I was like, what would happen if I actually brought my juggling balls to Aspen Ideas and invited anyone who wants to to try to juggle with me? Again, I don't really know how to do it, but I do have these balls. And maybe instead of giving people a party favor that will make everyone feel stupid if they use it, you could give something out that would actually create more fun. So I'm actually leading a fun prevention workshop on Monday that I hope some people will come to. And one of the things that the team and I have come up with is these little collections of conversation starters that we'll give to everybody that people can use afterwards to have more fun conversations. So brainstorm some bad ideas to see if there's the seed of anything good. And speaking of those conversation starters, another suggestion, my final suggestion to you, is to ask more playful questions of people. So no one wants to have the same boring small talk conversations over and over again that we typically have. We only have those because we don't really know what else to say. So I encourage you, first of all, to come up and find me at any point, because I do have those, so you could just pick one and ask it to somebody. But I also wanted to propose a question to you that has been bothering me personally ever since I heard it, and I'm hoping that you all will help me get to the bottom of this. It is this, is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> oh, strong opinions from the front, oh, okay. All right, well, raise your hand if you think a hot dog's a sandwich. Okay, whoa, raise your hand if you think it's not a sandwich. Oh my, God. right? I mean, talk about polarization. <laughs> so I actually was thinking of that before I even knew there were hot dog carts here, true story. So please like ask people this. I really want to find the answer to this question. So in conclusion, I really want you guys to treat fun as if it is important, because it is important, okay? The more fun that you have while you're here in Aspen, the more connected and present you're gonna feel, the more people you're gonna meet, the more legitimately good ideas you will come up with, the more experiences you're gonna have, and then the more you're gonna remember when you go home. So to recap, your assignments. Put your phone away, notice and share some delights, come up with some really bad ideas, <laughs> Consider the hot dog, <laughs> come to the fun intervention, and if all of this fails, maybe hire a clown. <laughs> Thank you all so much. I can't wait to have fun with you.